Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a super fun, really easy technique that was inspired by cards that Barbara Terrio posted earlier this month. They popped up in my feed and I was like, how did she get them to look like this? So I went over to her blog and she explained what she did and I was literally like jaw on floor. So... I will link to her blog post um, in the description box below the video because y'all should follow her because she makes fabulous cards. She doesn't really do videos. Um, I think she's been doing a few little reels on Instagram, but beautiful cards, definitely worth a follow. And this technique, seriously, game changer. <laughs> so what I started off with was uh, my Tim Holtz Media Grip, that was the gray stuff I was laying down. That's just to hold my cardstock in place on my glass work surface so it's not sliding all over the place. And then I just have some panels of Simon's Smooth White cardstock. And then I'm doing some simple ink blending. And I'm using all Simon Positively Saturated inks. And this first blend is, I have to like have all my ink pads sitting here, uh, Blush, Peony, and Sweets. And I'll have links to like all the colors I use, et cetera, et cetera, with the supplies. And I'm just using my blending brushes and blending them. And these inks, specifically the positively saturated inks, they not only do they smooth out as they dry, and you'll see, like, look how it looks now. It's got, you know, there's a little bit of splotchiness. It's going to be perfectly smooth when it's fully dry. And they do dry back a little bit as well. Um, but it, regardless, the blend with this does not need to be perfect, regardless of what inks you use. Because um, you could use distress inks. I'm curious how oxide inks would work with this technique. I'm not sure what Barbara used. I'll have to look at her blog post when I link to it. But anyway, um, like they'll all work. It's just I'm going to be adding paste on top of this. So it could be interesting. But test it out. You never know. So my second blend was uh, Sage, Tide Pool, and Surf. I was purposely going for colors that I just don't reach for all the time. Like my, my normal go-to would have been to just do rainbow backgrounds. <laughs> Although now that I've done this technique, I was like, oh, I, de I need to do some rainbow backgrounds because oh, it's it legit. It's just so much fun. So anyway, Sage, then Tide Pool, then Surf. And just... I applied it quite heavily just because I wanted, you know, um, color down. And because I know that when I apply the paste over this, it's going to sort of mute the color in a sense because there's like the mica flakes in the paste. So I, I would just recommend like a, a heavier application. Um, but regard it, 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 even saying that, honestly, it doesn't matter. You could do super, super bright colors. You could do pastel colors. It don't matter. It's all going to look amazing. <laughs> so every time I was done, I would move those ink pads off. I'd remove the, the little media grip that's... I've got this cut down to slightly smaller than A2 sized so that my brushes and things don't catch on that when I've got A2 panels. So then my final blend, I did Orchid, Violet, and Twilight. And even just these, even just blending these backgrounds, there, there is something really satisfying about this. Honestly, I need to do this more often, especially when I'm just feeling kind of blah about things or I got 5 million, generally. I never run out of ideas. I just get too many of them and I don't have enough time. But there's something therapeutic about doing backgrounds like whether you're ink blending them or doing ink smushing or just whatever it is you know kind of mindless sort of things like this they're therapeutic I love it and watching the colors just kind of come together especially you can already see those panels that are done as they're drying they're you know smoothing out it's like magic and I love it so anyway once I've got the colors applied the magic is Picket Fence Studios Paper Glitz now, I have had this Paper Glitz Sparkle Paste for a while. I got it back in the fall, something like that. I've done a few videos on it, and I have complained about it many times. 
I have complained about the consistency of it. I have mentioned many times I don't like the consistency of it. It is too runny. And I was annoyed by that. And I've shown videos where I have mixed it with other glitter paste to thin them out paste that have gotten too thick because I love the shimmer of it but I was like I don't like the consistency I don't like it I have been proven wrong I have seen the error of my ways <laughs> I'm not even you guys I'm not even exaggerating seriously this stuff's the best it's the best the consistency is perfect please pick a fence don't ever change it once you use it this way again the heavens opened love it <laughs> So it is, it's a runny paste. And my, my mistake, the very first time I tried to use, it, I tried to use it over a stencil. And that's not how you use it. You use it like this. Use it like this, it changes your life. So I mixed it up really well. This works really well with these um, tonic little spatulas, which I've had for years, because they're a little bit um, rubbery. And that way you can scrape up because all of the, the shimmer settles to the bottom. So that's what I was showing there. I, I, stirred it up really really well and then I applied it to my background and then I used my little stencil pal here just to apply it a little more evenly it doesn't need to be perfect um but this just I didn't want it like so thick that everything's just gonna go wonky everything else like you literally just need a thin amount and it looks like I'm applying a lot but I am not kidding I still have like three quarters of the jar left and I have used this stuff a lot and I did all three of these backgrounds and it looks like I'm glopping a lot on but I'm not seriously like the stuff it's it is it's magical so I applied it with the little Nouveau um palette knife here the little rubbery one and then used the stencil pal and I'm not pressing hard because basically, if you press hard, you're basically scraping it all off. But I'm just holding it at an angle and just trying to get it as even as possible. But again, it doesn't need to be perfect. So once I've applied it over the background, um, by the second one, I'm needing to use my little tweezers just to like pry it up there. Because I've got it like all over my work surface. I'm just making a big old mess and I don't care. I don't care. It's worth it. It was so much fun. <laughs> and again, the end, wait till you see the end results. Seriously so third background stuck it in place literally it's like sticking to the paste that's on the my work surface glopped on a bunch of the paper glitz and then just gently scraped it with my little stencil pal and then once that one's done I just take all that excess scrape it back into the container and then what I've just been putting these on a hard board and then I just set them aside to dry. And once I set those backgrounds aside, I immediately wash off my, um, my palette knives, etc. I scrape off my, um, work surface. It, this stuff cleaned up pretty easily, but you always want to just clean it up quickly. And then I let them dry and oh, they have almost like a mirror finish, but they're shimmer. Even with the shimmer, it is smooth it's weird seriously like this is what I mean like I owe an apology to the paper glitz because my brain never thought of using them like this and I'm, that's like literally what they were intended for so you know I'm a professional and I know everything <laughs> so that's why I'm glad that Barbara's cards popped up in my feed because this I can't even explain how much fun I had with this so they're now dry. I let them dry for I don't even know how long, um, like maybe an hour. I don't think it even takes that long, but I was busy doing die cuts and other th and all kind a million other things, you know, while I let them dry. And then I pulled out some embossing folders. And this is where it really gets fun. Um, you definitely could die cut these. I haven't done this yet. I would assume just because of how it went with the embossing folders when you if you die cut these backgrounds like anything intricate um you'll, you'll have a little bit of difficulty getting them out of the dies because even though the paste is dry it's just the nature of it it, it kind of clings to things like it did cling to the embossing folders but like it didn't tear anything nothing you know it's just yeah hopefully that makes sense so i emboss them with these different 3d embossing folders and I, look at it seriously look at it isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> like I was losing my mind at this point. I was like, this is the funnest thing ever. This is all I want to do right now. Like, can I just sit and do this all day, every day? Just make backgrounds, cover it with the glitz 
and then emboss them because they just they look wet but they're not and they're shimmery and the color and just everything like the texture from the embossing folders everything so all three of these embossing folders are from simon um i did my go-to sandwich which was uh my platinum six die cut machine with the original platform and i have two metal shims that's just what works for me follow where whatever embossing folders you're using follow like the manufacturer directions and instructions and things and yeah those panels embossed like a dream life was great while those were drying originally um i had die cut all these sentiments this is another oldie but goodie this is the just because wafer die set and i die cut it from scraps of white cardstock and also simon's matte gold cardstock and then stacking them all together so two layers of white top layer was gold to give it the dimension i'm using um simon's craft tacky glue that i have in a little um gina k a precision bottle and again I'll have links to that with all the supplies I've been using this for I'm not sure how many months now but the craft tacky glue has been working in these bottles perfectly and I just find I keep reaching for this more and more so I stacked all those sentiments together I then trimmed down these backgrounds so that they're going to be smaller than my a2 card fronts so they're going to be three and three quarters by five is what they ended up being in the end. So this way it just trimmed off some of the edges that I missed when I had like lined them up in the embossing folders. Plus I just do generally like having them smaller than the card fronts because then the card base gives it a nice little frame. And then the other thing I had done was I die cut more scraps of white cardstock as well as some vellum with the little leafy sprig wafer die and kind of figured out how I wanted to place these on the cards. I didn't want to add too much to these because the backgrounds are just so amazing that I don't want to cover them. <laughs> so I figured out how I wanted to apply these little leafy sprigs and the white cardstock ones I just adhered directly to the backgrounds with the craft tacky glue. The vellum ones I didn't adhere. I just hold them in place there and then the sentiment I apply the adhesive to and that's going to hold down those vellum ones because adhesive does show through vellum. Um, I've shown ways around that like running it through a iron machine to apply a solid amount of adhesive, hiding adhesive behind things, embellishments, things like that. Um, all those things sort of work within reason but this also works because vellum's super lightweight. So once the, the adhesive dried on the back of the sentiment, it's good to go. So I did that with all three of those card fronts. And then my card bases are top folding white um, A2 note cards. And I'm using a sentiment from this time I used the Greetings Mix 1 stamp set. I have been using the Greetings Mix 2 stamp set in several recent videos. Just another oldie but goodie favorite. And then I thought I thought I would, you know, really mix it up this time. So I was like, ooh, let's pull out the first one. Um, this came out. Goodness, it's been like four years since this one came out. This is another just good set. There's a huge mix of sentiments in here, different fonts and sizes and all the things. And love it. I've used it a ton. So I took the Today Will Be Awesome sentiment and I am inking it up with all three of the color blends that I did on the card fronts. And I'm just using um, leftover bits of post-it tape to mask off each um, line on the sentiment. And then I'm inking them up with those same colors in the same order I blended them on those backgrounds. So the first one, it was like sage at the top, tide pool in the middle, surf for the bottom. And then I just repeated the process with the other color blends. So masked off um, so that only the first word, you know, was visible and inked that up and then masked off the top and the bottom. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Super simple. And it just gives the inside. I kept the inside simple. Like, you know, I put the time and effort into to making them multicolored. So it ties in with the front. And then it was just, it's just a great sentiment. I was like, these are, these are fun cards, you know, literally just because, and today will be awesome. So after I was done for the actual card fronts, I coated the back of them with Simon's Big Mama foam tape because it's my favorite, literally, and because it's thin. 
if you are not familiar with the Big Mama foam tape. They call it Big Mama because the roll is enormous. This is about halfway used up at this point. It's huge, the roll. And I've had people ask me about this because, you know, I, I use a lot of it. I, I cover an entire background with it. Even with that, and you guys have seen how many videos I post, how many cards I make, how often I use this foam tape. It still takes me a while to go through a roll of this because it's so thin. So you just, you have an insane amount of it. And I love it because it gives me dimension without adding a ton of bulk. So coated all those with that foam tape, peeled off the backing, made sure to pop these onto the cards with the proper colors on the inside and also making sure that the card wasn't like backwards or anything, you know, because <laughs> I do that a lot. Anyway, after I got those adhered, I, I kept the rest of the bling simple because again, the backgrounds, the backgrounds are the focus. So I'm just using some Trinity stamps, uh, gold baubles, just to tie it in, you know, with the sentiment. So put those around um, the sentiments on the cards, adhered them into place with little dabs of craft hacky glue. Once those are adhered, these cards are complete. And I just, I really wish, even with like my flashlight, which I'm going to show to try and show the shimmer, like uh, taking pictures of these was not easy. I, one, I struggle with photos anyway. Um, Cause yeah, the shininess and just the fabulousness of it all. <laughs> it was like, my camera was like, no. <laughs> But anyway, these were a ton of fun to make. I am I am now converted. I love this paper glitz and I now need to get more containers of it because my I'm just like that FOMO, like fear of not, you know, running out. I need like 10 extra containers. So anywho, as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I'll link to all of the supplies I used. I'll also link to all the other paper glitz because there's actually a ton of colors. I need to get them all. Anyway, and then I'll link to Barbara's um, blog post because she gets all the credit because, and when you see your cards, it makes sense. I They're so pretty. So I'll have all that in the description box below the video for you guys to check out if you are interested. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, commenting, telling them, them robot overlords that you guys like what you see because they literally run my entire life. Um, subscribe if you haven't. And I'll also have a playlist at the end of this video with all my other embossing folder videos. So you can check that out if you want some inspiration. And I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.